She's uh, the unlikely bestseller, dominating the book charts and gaining a very large following on TikTok. Yet, yeah, drawing on years of experience as a clinical psychologist, Dr Julie Smith pr provides the skills you need to navigate life's challenges, but in manageable, bite-sized chunks. This is you and this is life. Because sometimes life does that, right? Sometimes we get chips and cracks and other times we get completely shattered and all we want to do is go back to the way things were but it's impossible right all we can do is start doing the work to rebuild stress is inevitable it pours in but you have the capacity to deal with it for a while now as that pressure builds you think you can just keep going but what if that stress keeps on coming and we don't do anything about it everyone has a breaking point <laughs> Brilliant. And Dr Julie Smith joins us now and you've brought some props along, which uh, we'll get to in a minute. But yeah. first, tell us all about your new book, Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before? Yeah, I mean, well, the, the title came from the, the reason I even started doing all these videos in the first place, which was, you know, I was working as a psychologist, offering therapy, and part of therapy is educational. So you teach people a bit about how their mind works, how they can impact on their mood and emotions. And, and I always felt that people shouldn't have to go to therapy to find out that part and that education about how their own mind works. And I wanted to put it out there. So we started to make a couple of YouTube videos and put some videos on Instagram and TikTok came out. Um, well, we discovered TikTok at that point as well. And the pandemic started and it just... It, just took off uh, and people were hungry for that information. And I like what you said, no, not everybody can afford therapy. Uh, no, and, and it's not accessible to, to lots of people for lots of different reasons. And, and while that isn't perhaps a replacement for therapy, it is something that people access when they're in therapy. So they do get taught a few things about how they can impact on their own mood. And so you can then look after your own health in your own time. And, and so I wanted to make that stuff, you know, freely available to people. What is, um, is brilliant? here is it's I mean there are lots of books on this subject and you start and look at it and think oh my god this is you know when do we get to the bit that involves me uh, this is bite size um, it's it's easy to understand um, it's easy to flick through it's not a book that you need to go all the way through all in one go um, because you can it's like a reference to yeah how you feel Absolutely. I mean, I rarely read a book cover to cover, and I'm sure most people are the same these days. So I wanted to make it so that you could dip in to the bit that was relevant to the things you were dealing with. So it, it's also, it also doesn't really mention uh, clinical diagnoses. It's, it's the problems that we all face. Every, you know, we all have days when our mood is lower than we want it to be, or we don't feel motivated, but we've got stuff to do, or we're having relationship problems, or we feel really stressed or anxious. So I wanted people to be able to dip in and say, OK, I've got this problem. Uh, what would a, a therapist say? Well, it's sort of, uh, for me, it was, it's more um, getting in touch with your mental health before it becomes a problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I get a lot of messages from people who are saying, you know, do you think I have this? And a lot of people think uh, they need to have some sort of diagnosis before they seek help and support. And it really isn't that way. You know, it's, it's OK to seek help without um, meeting the criteria for a diagnosis, for example. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, health is on a spectrum, so you can kind of move up and down it and fluctuate. Um, in your book, you talk of uh, metacognition. What was that? So our brains have this incredible ability to think about stuff, but they also have this ability to think about the things we're thinking about. So you can, and it's the sort of the main tool that is used in therapy is that ability to think about the thoughts that you're having. And when you get that kind of ability to step back and observe the, the patterns that your mind is, is working in, then you get this choice to then do something with it. You know, you can, you can see thoughts for what they are rather than accepting them as facts. You could go, well, then maybe there's a bit of a bias there. Maybe there's a negative bias here, or maybe, you know, I'm not kind of thinking in terms of a reflection of reality there. Or, you know, and so it gives you that chance to um, not take your thoughts at face value because the power of any thought is in how much you buy into it, right? Mm. Because then it has power to control how you feel and how you behave and stuff like that. So you're training your mind to train your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of the things that you were doing in therapy is, is talking about, oh, when that happened, I thought this and then I felt that. And when you do that, you can create this sort of map of the patterns that you get stuck in. Mm. And then you get this ability to go, oh, I can see the way out now. Um, but when you're in it, it's really hard to see. Well, as Josie said, um, getting therapy is 
not easy. I mean, virtually impossible, really. And also, it can be very expensive. Um, and there are millions of people now who have anxiety issues because of where we've been. We've had no let up. You know, you're locked in for two years and suddenly you find yourself on the from a global pandemic straight on Freedom Day. Dr. Strangelove goes into Ukraine, you know, so it's like I can't literally can't believe that there is no let up. And this is aside from the poor people who are directly involved there. But um, but everybody looks at this and it does your access to news all the time, looking at the news before bed. These are all things you say are important to you want to be involved, um, but you can't get to a therapist. And so you have to almost help yourself. Yeah, I think we have to be realistic, don't we? And for, for lots of different reasons, um, a lot of people don't have access to therapy. And, and so, uh, but, but we also don't have to be at, at the mercy of professionals. So they're really helpful and it's great. I would always advise people to go and access that if they had access to it. But also there are these amazing tools. There's this arsenal of tools that we can use every day. They're not difficult to learn, but they can help us along the way um, that, that so that we can manage our health in the way that we do with our physical health. You know, we exercise, we try to eat well, those sorts of things, because we know it will help. Mm. And in the same way, there are lots of things you can do to help boost your mental health as well. Right, you're going to show us now. I'm going to take this off the table because it might get wet. <laughs> this is where I make a mess, right? Yeah. OK. So um, how are you yeah. going to illustrate it? OK, so so one of the ways I uh, illustrate it in a, in a video is about low mood and how when you experience low mood, you have the urge to stop doing all the things you normally enjoy, right? Because you just it's a struggle to feel joy and pleasure and so you tell yourself you know there's no point because it won't make any difference and so let's say you do you know one thing that might bring you pleasure it's like a drop in the ocean and you tell yourself well, what's the point it's not making any difference and by itself it doesn't but if you do another one tomorrow and another one the next day and the next day and you make a habit of always putting in something that brings you joy then what happens is it starts to sort of change the feel of things. You know, the, the colour of your life begins to change. And so those small habits build up to, to, you know, and that's what happiness is. It's not this one fleeting moment. It's an accumulation of small moments of joy and meaning and purpose that gradually change the general feel of things. So that was one I did on low mood. That, uh, it was a kind of video that we put on Instagram. Um, but also you get a lot of people say, you know, what can I do when I'm really distressed or when I'm really anxious? And uh, one of our videos, we, we looked at um, the role of something you've got in the house, so ice. So uh, when you hold ice, it's quite an extreme sensation. It demands your attention. When you're really distressed, let's say you're overwhelmed with anxiety and panic or something else, and, and you're, you're not sure how to kind of ground yourself and be back in the present moment. You can use any of your senses to bring you back to the here and now. But ice is a really great way of doing that because, again, it demands your attention, right? So you can hold it in your hands, you can rub it on your arms or even on your face. If you reduce the temperature of your face, then that can kind of slow your heart rate to help you calm the stress response. Um, the downside to it is you don't always have access to ice, but if you're at home, and then that can be something you can... And we actually do kind of ice diving as well, where you make a big bowl of uh, ice-cold water and you can kind of wash your face or submerge mm -hmm. your hands and it can really kind of help to bring um, uh, sort of strong emotions down if you're struggling with that. Mm -hmm. um, I did notice you bought a drill. <laughs> and I, I just wondered what, what the drill was for. Yeah, so the, this is another, um, another video where I kind of flooded my therapy room and made a big mess. Um, and that was the stress bucket video. So this is the idea that if this is you and the water is all the stress that you face, so we can't stop stress from coming, right? In the, in the video, I had a hose pipe, actually, to show that stress just keeps on coming. So let's imagine that, that at some point, you know, we only have so much capacity, so at some point it overflows if stress keeps coming. If you have no way of processing it and releasing it. And in the video, where's my drill gone? Just to oh, the back of you there. behind me, there we here we go. <laughs> right, OK. So, um, you know, let's say every time you exercise, it's like doing this. And every time you make time to see friends, it's like doing this. And every time you meditate, it's like doing that. So every time you have one of those kind of positive self-care habits, mm. It doesn't solve all your problems, it doesn't stop stress from coming, but it creates a release valve which makes space and gives you more capacity to deal with more stress that comes tomorrow. Oh, thank you.
Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Julie. That was amazing. amazing. Yeah, you can tidy that up now. <laughs> 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 Don't use an electric drill. Um, thank you very thank much you. indeed. Thank, thank you. This is the book we're talking about. Why has nobody told me this before? Uh, and thank you very much. Yeah.